my name is uh, Anthony Angelo Di Francesco. Everybody calls me Jello. I was born in the Philippines in Mandaluyong, um, uh, 1971, and uh, grew up in a family of singers. But nobody, um, nobody wanted to be a musician. And lo and behold, the youngest, which is me, um, took up nursing at first. One day, I woke up and said, ah, nursing is not for me. Uh, going back in high school, uh, I wanted to be a priest. And one time, we went to this uh, uh, retreat at the Oblates of Mary Immaculate OMI. And I was so impressed by the by, by the uh, priests who who um, led the the retreat so and and i wanted to wear a big cross uh in my sash because that's how they were um they they kept a big cross uh i think it was a rosary anyway big cross here <laughs> that's cool that time i always go to to the wednesday novena at uh, my church, and um, I have this the the, the book, uh -huh. um, and uh, you know, I mean, at that time, my eye my eyesight was like really good that I can do a a, a, a cheat sheet. Na, na, na. That you know, I, I I always bring that in my wallet, and uh, I think that saved me from a lot of. Uh, um, mischievous uh, situation. And when I uh, graduated high school, I, I still didn't know what I wanted to be. I think I am where I am supposed to be. Uh, music and faith and uh, you know, uh, and that's my story. I, my family. Uh, I met her in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, her name is Maria, Vic, uh, Maria Victoria Francis uh, Bello at that time. Siempre ang liligawan mo yung parents. Uh, so tip number one: kung manliligo ka yun, usap ba yun? Nandiligaw. Yung mga bata ay hindi nandiligaw. Eh. Uh, tip number one. If you're going to court somebody, court their parents first. <laughs> eh, buti na lang, the parents are music lovers, mm -hmm. including her dad. Uh, that time was a colonel in the Air Force, Philippine Air Force. Our marriage is not the perfect, the, the most perfect one. Um, you know, ikasal ka ba naman sa temperamental art, you know, musician. <laughs> But, you know, I've learned a lot from uh, She's my rock. Uh, and she's my financial guru. She's a mother to two wonderful uh, young men. We migrated here 2001. Um, that was the day before 9-11 happened. Everything changed. Uh, immigration laws changed right away. And I said, Sumunod na kayo uh, before everything becomes uh, difficult. We're, we're grateful for America adopting us and uh, making us uh, one of her citizens. When I was back in the Philippines, I got to talk to one of my uncles, one of my dad's brothers, eldest brothers, and he said, and it stuck to me forever, and he said, it doesn't make sense. Um, it, because I was contemplating on what to do with my life. And he said, well, what do you love to do? He said, I love to sing. I, 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 I do music. I love music. There you go. That's what you should do. Lord, you na bahala sa akin kasi, you know, I've always been and always will be dependent on you. Uh, wherever you lead me, I'll, I'll go. 
So uh, I, I, I ended up doing odd jobs. I auditioning in Broadway, yung mga, mga musicals dito. And, you know, at that time, uh, during one audition, uh, I, I really, I, I remember it was for Rent, uh, the touring, touring group. Uh, I passed the first audition. And then after, they said, oh, you passed. So we'll see you at the callbacks. I, I, I remember I didn't feel happy, but there was worry. What if you get the role? So you will be touring. So that, that, that. What happens to your family? That, that, that. And the next thing I knew, I was hired as a cantor at St. Genevieve's um, Parish in, in Panorama City. And then eventually becoming um, the director for music. Mm -hmm. I'm now the music director here at St. John Baptist de la Salle. Um, and it's, it's been a really, uh, if I would write a book about my life, I would, you know, it, it would be this thing. A lot of people, because of this pandemic, although the church is closed, a lot of people turn to prayer. What brought you here is not necessarily the one to bring you to the next. And, and we need to adjust, we need to tweak, we need, because people are hurting. With, with my relationship with him, I think it's personal and um, it, you know, and, and whenever I do something that's not in line, you know, in, in line with his teaching or in line with his commandment, I apologize and, you know, I, I would like to believe I'm forgiven. At the end, if it does not result to love, then, you know, do away with that rule. You know, and, and, and I have to really acknowledge that I'm I'm nowhere near perfect I'm nowhere near saintly I'm, you know I think my vocation is to to seek out people with with the same uh, passion if you would and uh, I've done it and um, come to think of it it's like more than 15 years now that uh, we put up and put together and started uh, Philippine Chamber Singers. If, if our goal is to share the culture through choral music, you know, it's as authentic as it could be. When we were starting this group, it, you know, the birth pains was like really, it took a long time for, for this group to be where it is right now. We performed uh, in New York in uh, Carnegie Hall. Um, as far as that, and of course around here um, in LA, um, beautiful concert hall, um, Walt Disney Concert Hall, um, where I think it was the validation of what we were trying to accomplish as the leader of the group. You know, people. <laughs> because my kids call me Tatay and uh, I somehow I became the figure to them but you know uh, I didn't volunteer for it but it just happened and I have to step up to the role because I grew up thinking that you know when you're, you're when you're given a gift 
um, you should share it. And that's what I learned. You have to give out. That time, I was already with the YouTube Radio Singer. At that time, they were called the YouTube Radio. And uh, I was touring around, uh, around the world and um, all over the Philippines. I remember we, we did a concert in, uh, in Smoky Mountain. Us in full costume, our, our uh, women were wearing the terno, the long gowns, and uh, we were wearing barons, of course, and, and leather shoes. And we were walking. There was a small stage at the center of this community, surrounded by mountains of rubbish, trash, and um, even if the smell was horrendous for us, you will see little kids, people living there, we're, we're doing this for them, and, and I think we gave it our best, and, and the minute we stepped off the 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 mini mini bus kids ran up to us and you know they put wood planks uh, on the on the you know pathway and and they knew they knew and then some some even um, uh, held our our uh, female singers uh, guided I will never forget that experience. vivid until today uh, you know, uh, while we were doing the concert on that stage there were no seats on, you know, on, on the audience uh, and, and they were just sitting on the ground you know with trash all over I think they're sitting on the trash you know for that moment they simply forgot that you know where they are because we we you know we brought the world in in that community. My advice, my advice, an, an advice from uh, the unexpected missionary, from an unexpected missionary. Uh, be true to what you do. Um, it has, it all has to be tied, it, it should tie together. What you do in life, it should also translate to what you believe in. It can't be two different things. Um, you can be normal, you can be just an ordinary person. Uh, with an ordinary life but still do it with purpose and for the reasons of you want to make a difference um, like uh, Saint Jose Maria Escrivas uh, you know his way is like do ordinary things extraordinarily and offer it to God. Small things, little things, um, baby steps, blessed the uh, Carlo Acutis. Um, he, he, he did it because he wanted to do it. Um, and, and even if he didn't want to do it, he still offered it. Um, if, if everybody did ordinary things, with the intention of being extraordinary, I think this world will be a better place to live in. Pandemic or no pandemic.